Sports Scene, Hampton Roads premiere interview show with Greg Bicaveras each Saturday from 10 a.m. to 11. And you look at that, 4-4 four and four at home, which is just average, 4-3-1 and one on the road. I mean, you're not going to win any games like that. They were not the same team after they beat the Packers, yet the Packers were a totally different team. Interact with Sports Scene on Twitter, at Greg Bick, and listen weekly as Greg interviews distinguished guests with excellent commentary and insight. Sports Scene, Saturdays at 10 a.m. on the Lighthouse 100.1 FM. Good junk, bad junk, old electronics, computers, cables in a box, laying around, what's to be done? Fortunately, Providence Computers in Chesapeake is your 9 a.m. to 7 p.m. daily drop-off location for recycling all such stuff. We even appraise and purchase the newer items for hard, cold cash. Providence Computers is located at 473 Kempsel Road in Chesapeake, behind Wawa and next to Walmart. If it's your home or business, we welcome the chance to partner with you to recycle sensibly. Call us today, 382-7768, and see us at ProvidenceComputers.com. From Chesapeake, Virginia, the Lighthouse 100.1 presents Sports Scene. Sports Scene features local, regional, and nationally acclaimed guests and excellent interviews. Follow Sports Scene on Twitter at Greg Bick. Now here is Greg Bickaveras. Sports Scene, today's show will be special. Hope 2019 is great for all so far. Presented by Hampton Roads Online Mall.com. Browse, shop, visit. Sports Scene is midweek online, Saturday on the radio on WPMH on 1010 AM, 100.1 FM. Tune in.com. Type in WPMH in the search bar. Please tell your friends about Sports Scene. Twitter at Greg Bick at GJB Radio. You can see the rest of my Twitter handles on GJBTV.com in the contact section. Thank you to our military for what you do, especially near the wall. Guest line are presented by Mi Casita Mexican Restaurant with two locations in Virginia Beach. Phone line presented by Outback Steakhouse in Kempsville, GJBTV.com. And of course, Joe Daniel is moving on as a producer. More on that a little bit later. Great interviews, excellent guests, business segments, highlights, commentary, what teased me off. Thank you for listening to the Sports Scene. We love our regulars, newcomers, tourists who listen online and on the radio. Stay tuned. At Hartman Dentistry, not only do you experience exceptional customer service with compassionate dental care, but with our in-house lab, we're able to offer same-day dentures. Options are available for all budgets. Plus, we work with two credit companies that will finance treatment for patients without insurance or limited coverage. Call Hartman Dentistry today to learn more about how we can fix your smile faster. Call 757-873-3407. That's 873-3407. Catch up on archived editions of Sports Scene by going to gjbtv.com and clicking the YouTube image on the homepage. Now back to Sports Scene with Greg Bicaveras. And welcome back to Sports Scene. I want to thank our good friends at Oyami Sushi, best Japanese cuisine in Virginia Beach. Give them a call at 631-6888, located on North Great Neck Road in Virginia Beach. It's a pleasure to welcome back uh, under the trussel Ron Peterson Jr. Used to work for Cox. Of course, been on sports scene before. Proud member of the Hampton Road Sports Media Hall of Fame board. Ron, good to see you. Thanks, Greg. It's great to be here. Very good, uh, Ron. First of all, tell us about your sports background. I know you have a big interest in William Mary with some family members, too. Absolutely. Um, yeah, my son is a student athlete at William & Mary. He's a senior swimmer on the swim team. Was an all-conference swimmer last year. And uh, I actually played baseball in college at Radford University, played on their first NCAA baseball team in 1985. Very nice. Of course, I went to George Mason, and Radford is one of the schools I really liked back then because uh, it was easy to get into. (laughs) Yes, indeed. Yep. But always a lot of fun. All right. We're here today to talk uh, about your book, Under the Trestle, The 1980 Disappearance of Gina Renee Hall in Virginia's first no-body murder trial by Ron Peterson, Jr. Before we talk about the book, there's a lot of before and after about writing a book, as you well know. That takes a lot of time, talent, and some treasure. Absolutely, Greg. Um, This was an idea I I had for a book ever since I was in college, and I'll I'll talk more about that. Um, Over the years, as I I researched this case and uh, Gina Renee Hall, who we'll talk more about, I realized it was a story that really needed to be told, and um, as most authors do, shopped the book around to a lot of different publishers, got the usual rejections from publishers, 
and uh, eventually decided to go the self-publishing route with iUniverse. And uh, we kind of had a hybrid publishing agreement where, you know, they helped underwrite some of the cost of it. But still, I had to, to cover the cost of getting the book published and obviously going out and promoting it now. Absolutely, Ron. And when you talk about that, the before and after, you thought about this during college. And of course, uh, it was involved in the state that we live in, Virginia, also in the Radford area, correct? So exactly. So near the, um, the Roanoke area, people are not familiar with Radford University. It's not too far from Virginia Tech, not too far from VMI in that corridor. Exactly. And uh, something we'll talk more about, too, the book has a really interesting Virginia Tech football connection. So as a sports fan, I knew that, that it was a story that other, other sports fans, as well as someone who has an interest in a good crime story, would, would like to hear. This happened almost before you were in school, though. It did. It happened in 1980. And um, what happened? A, a girl named Gina Renee Hall went to a Virginia Tech nightclub on a Saturday night for a night of dancing. And she left the club at midnight. And Gina Renee Hall was never seen again. That is so sad because we've had stuff here in the Williamsburg area, as you know, in the Colonial Parkway. And it kind of reminds you of that. That was back in the late 80s. It sure was. It sure was. And as I learned more about this case, after after being intrigued by it as a college student, I felt like it was a story that, that had really not been told. And that's one of the reasons I decided to write the book. Now, and I need you to elaborate a little bit, too, as well, that the Virginia State Police obviously have jurisdiction throughout the entire state. But a lot of times, FBI, state police, you know, law enforcement are kind of buttoned up about certain things. Certain things are sealed. How was that? Because giving out information, even 39 years later, is not easy. You're exactly right, Greg. And I was very fortunate in that several of the key investigators for the case are now retired. And because someone was convicted of the murder, they're able to speak freely about it. So I was able to get a lot of information. Now, what happened that night? Um, as I mentioned, June 28, 1980, uh, Jeannie Renee Hall was never seen again. Late that night, her sister got a phone call at about 1 o'clock, 1.30 in the morning, and Gina told her she was at a lake house at Clater Lake with a man named Steve. Um, search got underway for Gina Hall. Her car was found the next day abandoned under an old railroad trestle that crossed the New River between Pulaski County and Radford, hence the name of the book, Under the Trestle. The car was abandoned, the trunk was left open, and there was blood and hair that matched her type in the trunk. The following day, a man came forward. Uh, he was a former Virginia Tech football player named Stephen Epperly, uh, a 28-year-old, 1978 graduate of Virginia Tech. And Epperly told police that he left the Marriott Lounge, the club they were at, that Saturday night. He'd taken her back to a lake house at Clater Lake. And according to Epperly, she declined his advances. She gave him a ride home late that night. He got home about 3 o'clock, 3.30, and they parted ways amicably. Initially, police had no reason to doubt his story. He was a clean-cut guy, college graduate, and appeared to have nothing to hide. When they investigated the lake house, uh, police found over 30 pieces of forensic evidence, including blood that matched Gina Hall, that pointed to a violent struggle at the house. Um, Stephen Epperly was then their their main suspect. You mentioned he was in his late twenties. How old was she exactly? Gina Renee Hall was eighteen years old at the time of her her disappearance and murder. So that was kind of suspect. Why they were even together? What was he doing with her? That's a great question. Um, both of them were with a group of people at the Marriott Lounge. Gina went there by herself, but witnesses say she was with a group of people that that she knew. Uh, she danced with Steve Epperly a few times. Gina was just a person uh, who liked to dance. Uh, she liked to dance for dancing's sake. Um, there's witnesses and, and evidence that says Stephen Epperly obviously had, had other motives. Um, and according to witnesses, Gina believed there was a group of people going back to the lake house when in reality it was just a one-on-one -on -one situation with her and Epperly. We're talking to Ron Peterson, Jr. The book is Under the Trestle, very captivating Boy, I'm looking forward to reading this book just by hearing Ron talk about it. The 1980 disappearance of the young lady, Gina Renee Hall, Virginia's first no-body murder trial. She's not been heard of in 39 years. What about Epperly? Epperly is still serving in the Virginia State Penitentiary. Interestingly enough, he still, to this day, claims he is innocent. He went through a 12-year saga of appeals at the state and federal level, 
There was a series of habeas corpus appeals. And finally, in, in 1992, uh, he appealed his conviction all the way to the, Virgi- to the Virginia's, to the United States Supreme Court, who declined to hear the case. So he's been locked up for all these years. He has. He's He's been eligible for parole every three years, starting in 94. And every three years, the Virginia Parole Board has denied his parole, in large part because this is a person who not only did he kill someone, but has continued to punish her family by, by not telling them what he did with her remains. Goodness. I mean, that's a long time ago because if it was so transparent and honest, you think he would have said something by now because he served most of his adult life in prison. You're exactly right. And you hear about other murder cases around the country where the person convicted uh, discloses where the victim's body is in order to be eligible for for parole. So the obvious question is, why hasn't Epperly done that? And I think the explanation, uh, according to people I interviewed for the book, is that he went through the appeals for 12 years. And during that whole time, professed his innocence as as part of the appeal process. So it's almost a case of someone telling themselves the same lie for that long that, that eventually they believe it. This is Sports Scene every Saturday morning from 10 to 11 on 1010 AM, 100.1 FM, tunein.com. Type in WPMH. This will be shared on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube. Greg Bick on Twitter talking to Ron Peterson. Go ahead and give us your Twitter handles, Facebook, whatever. The book is on Twitter and Facebook at, at under the trestle. And Trestle is spelled T-R-E-S-T-L-E. Very nice. A lot of a lot of uh, subjects that you interviewed for this book. Exactly, I interviewed over a hundred people for the book. I spent about the last year writing the book, and was very fortunate in that even though it's been thirty thirty nine years, most of the key players are still alive. So I interviewed the prosecuting attorneys, the two defense attorneys, several attorneys who handled Epperly's case on the appeal. Uh, the investigating police officers and and state police officers, as well as friends and family of both Gina Renee Hall and Stephen Epperly. I guess you had to do it because uh, 40 years is a long time, you know, and people could be gone, you know. So you really had a limited amount of time probably for some to have their memory and have all their faculties together. You're exactly right. I I was amazed at how how much these people still remember about the case who were involved with it. And um, also, there was a sense of urgency on my part. I, I wanted to tell this story while, while they were still around. Um, a big part of it also, and I'd like to say my whole motivation for writing the book, is for years it's always uh, just been something that, you know, you police now have told me that they're hoping publicity from the book helped leads to, to one age-old lead of maybe some person out there who might know what Epperly did with Gina Renee Hall's body. And you've gotten a lot of media exposure. Have you talked to Epperly? He declined to be interviewed. Um, I I requested several times. Well, I I certainly can't speak for him, but I think over the years he's spoken with several reporters and even did a television interview from prison. And the result of the, the interviews that he's done did not turn out in his favor. So I think that could be a reason why he didn't want to talk. It seems like he's almost settled that he is going to be in prison the rest of his life i mean that is not a quality of life that is horrible existence but in my opinion if you beat somebody up you're going to pay the price let alone kill somebody i certainly agree with that as as does um everyone interviewed for the for the book you know there's been so many murders that have happened in and out of bars i hope people realize you can't drink and drive you can't touch a woman and if you go somewhere, go with a buddy, right? You're go, exactly, you're exactly right, buddy. Greg. Yep. I, I was fortunate in writing this book. I interviewed Jill Harrington, who is founder of the Help Save the Next Girl Foundation, in honor of her daughter, uh, Morgan Harrington, who you probably remember her name in the, the Charlottesville cases uh, several years ago. But uh, Jill Harrington has just done tremendous work on behalf of the Help Save the Next Girl Foundation to get that message out there. Very nice. We'll talk more with uh, Ron Peterson, Jr. The book is Under the Trestle. This is Sports Scene, a little sports and intrigue. We'll tell you how sports is even more involved in this after these messages. Now you can fly anywhere in the world and pay discount prices on your airline tickets. Book a flight today to London, Paris, Madrid, or anywhere else you want to go. And pay a lot less guaranteed. Call the International Travel Department right now at low-cost airlines. 800-648-9175. 800-648-9175.
That's 800-648-9175. Interact with Sports Scene on Twitter at Greg Bick. Email B-I-C-O-G-B at Hotmail.com. Now back to Greg Bick of Aris in the Hampton Roads Online Mall.com studios. Welcome back to Sports Scene. I want to thank our good friends at Outback Steakhouse in Kempsville. Go by and see Mike and the friendly staff at 1255 Fordham Drive in Virginia Beach. Phone number is 523-4832. Follow them on Twitter. Like them on Facebook. Download the Outback Steakhouse app in Kempsville. They deliver burgers, steaks, soups, salads, appetizers, seafood, pasta, chicken, ribs, chops, desserts, beverages, dine in and carry out, newly spacious dining room, excellent place to eat lunch and dinner seven days a week. Outback in Kempsville. Back with Ron Peterson, Jr. Ron, you have a full-time job, and you've got a family. How much did this take away from both? Um, fortunately, I was able to, to do the book mostly on nights and weekends. Um, spent a lot of time on it just about, you know, just about every night uh, and weekends. And uh, probably ought to thank my wife and kids because many times there were projects that didn't get done around the house. And uh, the lawn was pretty tall because I wasn't mowing it because I was inside working on the book. Right, especially during the summer. When did the book come out? Uh, the book was published three weeks ago. I'm happy to say it's uh, it's done extremely well. It's an Amazon top 50 bestseller in the true crime book category. And for the last four days, it's been ranked uh, in terms of sales alongside books by John Grisham and Patricia Cornwell. So so I'm very proud of that. Looking forward to reading it. Um, the expense of the book. Um, it, I, yeah, to be candid, I really haven't, haven't – uh, track that uh too closely but i'd say you know over i came out of out of pocket probably probably a few thousand dollars in the the whole process and my research and actually working to get the book published did you take a lot of road trips i did i i went back to uh the new river valley to radford and blacksburg three times and there were also trips to richmond uh met with with gina hall's sister delana hall in richmond First off, to make sure I got the family's blessing for the book and just wanted to follow any guidelines they had. And then, interestingly enough, the Library of Virginia in Richmond has this, the court trial, which lasted five days. And we'll talk about that in a few minutes, I'm sure. But it's got that on audio tape. So I went there and took the time to actually listen to the trial, listen to all the witness testimony. And and some of that, you can imagine, was very difficult to listen to. Yeah, I can imagine. Imagine, folks, when you get in an argument with somebody and then you don't talk to them ever again. Well, imagine a murder and that person that did it is still alive. And how does that family let go? How do they, what is their recourse? What is their, you know, forgiveness or not forgiveness? Because the grudge of the loss of a young one is you can't put a price tag on it. You're exactly right. I I can only imagine. And you know the other the other part of this, um, the fact that that Gina Hall's family, who are who are just great Christian people, they never gave her a, a proper burial. Gina Hall never had a Christian burial. And in my research for the book and talking with with people like grief counselors and even psychologists, that it's it's a basic human need to safely bury the the remains of your loved ones and gina hall's family has never never had the closure in doing that and again my hope is that the book might might bring up some old lead that helps helps lead to the discovery of gina you wonder what he's holding back and what's his point of holding back has he been in jail since 1980 or 81 uh he's been in jail since 1980 he was um uh, sentenced immediately after the the conviction to life in prison how about his family or did he, he had, have any uh he had uh Two sisters and a brother, and um, you know, you point that out, and it's worth noting that this was a tragedy for his family as well. Um, every indication is his, you know, family is are just just good folks. Um, certainly had no other no other trouble for the law, and his mother specifically was someone who was just a just a good church going woman who did everything she could to bring her kids up the right way. Um, she actually testified in the trial against him, believe it or not. Wow. And, of course, he played briefly at Virginia Tech football, correct? He did. He was involved in the program, according to my research, uh, through 75 and 76. He played in Virginia Tech's 70, 75 spring game. And um, the Virginia Tech media guide uh, described him, uh, quote, as a fun-loving redhead who had a ball in spring practice. Interesting. Very nice. Talking to Ron Peterson, Jr. You mentioned the trial. He said it wasn't that long. Uh, it was about a five-day trial. That's brief. Um, Yep. Uh, what was no- noteworthy was um, there were th- 
three former Virginia Tech football players who testified. One of them was Epperly's best friend who was with him the night of the murder uh, at the nightclub and then later encountered him late that night at the lake house where the murder took place. Uh, that person's name was Bill King, and if there was a star witness in the trial, it, it would have been Bill King. Hokies football fans will know him or know the name for being a blocking back uh, back in the mid-'70s for Virginia Tech's first 1,000-yard rusher, who was Roscoe Coles in 1975 and 1976. Wow. So there's a lot of sports connections there, too. As we're talking to um, Ron Peterson, Jr., the book is under the trestle. He made several trips to the Roanoke, Virginia Tech area as well. And I guess you learned something as uh, you, you made your travels there. You had time to process as you were driving. Exactly. Yep. Um, and then another thing that, that was was very helpful, several of the key people over the at least the last six months, I'd, I'd have almost weekly conversations with, you know, with, with, for example, the attorney who prosecuted the case, Everett Shockley who was Commonwealth attorney in, in Pulaski County and is now in private practice um, still in that area. Um, there were, were frequent phone calls to him to follow up on some of the legal aspects of the case just to make sure I told that story correctly. And it's, it's worth pointing out with regard to Everett Shockley that prior to this case, there had never been anyone in Virginia convicted of murder without the victim's body. Now, as you probably know, the legal system is built on precedent. So without the precedent of a previous no-body murder conviction, there was a lot of doubt that the Commonwealth could get a jury of 12 people to to agree that one, Gina Hall was dead, and two, that, that she was murdered. So uh, Everett Shockley, pretty much against the, the advice of every attorney he knew, decided to indict Epperly for murder and successfully got, got the conviction. You know, and of course, uh, the closure is they still don't know where the body is. In a recap. You're exactly right. And, you know, one of the, of the, the things that just sticks in my mind, uh, the person I got to know really well in writing the book was the lead investor, investigator on the case, a former Virginia State trooper by the name of Austin Hall, who, like so many people, still lives in that area. And on the one hand, Austin Hall is, is very proud of the fact that, that he took a, took a monster off the street. Epperly was someone not only who, who killed Gina Hall, but had a very violent background and uh, had been charged with, with, sexual assault at least a few times before. Um, so on the one hand, Austin Hall and the other investigators are, are very satisfied by the fact that they were able to gain the conviction. But on the other hand, the fact that they never found the remains of Gina Hall after a, a long search that, that actually continues to this day, that's something that really troubles everyone in that area. This is a good example of somebody who needed to be waterboarded. You know, this guy is a piece of crap that killed this teenage girl. This is my opinion, folks, not Ron's, that he should have been waterboarded. It's interesting you say that. There was a, a biker gang in the area at the time, and I got this from several several folks I interviewed for the, the book, that was very loudly threatening to, to abduct Epperly and torture him until he gave that information. In fact, because of that, Epperly moved to Ohio during the summer of 1980, and he was actually in Ohio at, at just before he was indicted. And he went there, according to him, but because he feared for his life. He was almost a fugitive, though. I mean, that would have been like a fugitive on the loose, meaning that he was running away from the law. You're right. You're right. Now, to his attorney's credit, um, when it became uh, apparent that the indictment was coming down, his attorney made a point to tell him to move back to end state so that he wouldn't be a fugitive and obviously to have better optics on the case. His life has not evolved at all. I mean, it's just basically been in a spiral of this case for 39 years while other people have gone on with their lives gingerly, like the um, Hall family. His life has not really evolved at all. It's been a spiral of, of negativity. You're exactly right. And and in the book, I also interviewed uh, correctional officers who had, had – uh, worked with Epperly and then also even even inmates who who shared stories about about his life behind bars like example well one story was um Epperly was known for his volatile temper and that's something that that everyone I interviewed who knew him just said he was a guy who could could fly off the handle in in a second and in one case in prison he was um uh, was waiting to use a payphone. This was back in the days of payphones, I guess. And there was someone on the payphone that was talking too long. So Epperly bear hugged the payphone, the payphone booth, and slammed it to the ground with the guy in it. 
wow. And of course, he played football, so he was pretty big, too. The media attention you've gotten for this has been overwhelming for probably your own. How did you go about getting all the media attention? It's been great, I'm, and I've, I've been very happy about that. Um, I mentioned earlier uh, Jill Harrington's name of the, the Help Save the Next Girl Foundation, and um, a portion of the book's proceeds goes to, to the Help Save the Next Girl. And uh, Jill was very gracious in supporting the book, and um, I think because of that credibility, I, I did a radio appearance um, actually back in December, on the the top billing radio station in the country, WTOP-FM in Washington, D.C., where a reporter named Neil Augenstein, who has read the book and also took an interest in the case, featured a segment on it. And uh, that gave the book a lot of publicity. And then this past Sunday, the Roanoke Times ran a really nice full-page article, not only on the book, but also interviewing a current police lieutenant in Radford who has reopened the search for Gina's remains. And, and it's helpful that, that the book... And the publicity about the book might help him find Gina. I have a little connection there, too, because I spent a little time at WTOP when I was at George Mason. And I'll never forget, on my way there, I got an HOV ticket from a Virginia State police officer. So that was my first interaction with, with WTOP. Um, but anyway, very powerful radio station. Where is the book uh, sold at? Uh, the book's uh, available at on Amazon uh, at Barnes and Noble on BarnesandNoble.com and still making its way to the store shelves at Barnes and Noble. Um, it's also available in ebook format and on Kindle. How many times have you heard this question in the last year as we let you go from your wife? Has this taken away from your full time job? Well, we mentioned that a little bit on the onset that you do have a career, but um, is, was it a concern for your wife and your kids? Um, it was, you know, and, and my wife and I talked a lot about it early on and. Um, felt that I could pull it off without too much detriment. I, I think, quite frankly, it's, you know, the, the biggest um, detriment has been it's, it's taken, taken me away a little bit from, from the family time, you know, the, all the time I've spent on this. Yep. And leave us with, again, how people can get a hold of you on social media. They can access the book at, at Under the Trestle, all one word, on Facebook and Twitter. Uh, my Facebook page is, you can find me, Ron Peterson Jr. And then uh, there's a website for the book, uh, underthetrestle.com. And like we said, the book's available online on Amazon, barnesandnoble.com, and at, at bookstores like Barnes & Noble. It's fascinating, folks. I can't wait to read it. Under the Trestle, a sports connection, a missing person connection, a death, the 1980 disappearance of Gina Renee Hall in Virginia's first no body murder trial by ron peterson jr live in the studio with us today ron thank you happy new year as well thank you greg happy new year to you and thank you very much for letting me come here to tell the story very good sports scene will continue after this hey mamas wouldn't it be nice if life had a pause button so you could hold on to those precious moments with your little ones Time is not our friend, but Chesapeake artist Beverly Gorganis can make those special moments last forever with her Children of the King portraits. Just imagine your child captured in oil wearing a crown symbolizing their worth. The process is easy. You provide the photo and Beverly Gorganis will create a one-of-a-kind oil painting you will be sure to love. Each portrait comes framed and ready to hang. Visit BeverlyGorganis.com to learn more. You are listening to Sports Scene with Greg Bicavaris. Now, back to Greg. All right, and welcome back to Sports Scene. want to thank our good friends over there at the Marksman and Newport News every month for being on this show. Let's welcome George McLean, the owner. George, how are you, my friend? Doing well, Greg. How about yourself? Good. Happy New Year to you. Happy New Year to you, sir. We just had an interesting guest on our first segment of the show that'll be on the radio here soon and also on tune in and also on YouTube about a missing persons case from 1980 in the Roanoke area that still has not been resolved. And I guess uh, that goes hand in hand with anything else about safety, too, is when you're going out in public, especially at night, you should not be going alone pretty much anywhere unless, I guess, going to the gas station. But it seems like no matter what family we've got, we spend a lot of time alone. And there's different factors that go in when you're alone or you, when you're with a companion driving somewhere off of your property. Well, that's that's, uh, that's very true. And you know, from uh, from my generation, we were taught early on just about uh, for everything that you did, uh, you use the buddy system. Whether that was uh, going swimming or you're going hiking or you know, uh, I think double dates, double dates even came from that as uh, as well. But uh, it, it was 
so you could uh, you know, be better protected and, and have some help there. Yeah, and, you know, we, uh, of course, are all equal here, men and women, but women are a little bit more vulnerable than men. But I know this man that went to my church, the elderly are very vulnerable as well. He was at a mall. He got held up. Nothing happened to him. He released the cash. But, uh, you know, stuff happens during the daytime. Stuff happens at night. But it seems like a lot of times things happen at night when you're alone, when you least expect it. The thing is, I always tell my family members are, have your antenna up. You cannot let your guard down in a parking lot. Also, when you get out of your car, allow 30 seconds to look around you front and back to see who's parked near you. Uh, That's very true. Not only as you're getting out of the car, but as you're approaching the car, if you've been out of it for a while in a uh, shopping mall or grocery store, uh, kind of take you know, the, the wide angle around and take a look and make sure that there's not someone that's uh, you know, hunkered down that's, that's waiting to you know, grab a, a pocketbook or you know, something along that, uh, that, that type uh, to surprise you and abuse you. So you know, always, yes, be aware. Have your antennas up. Expect the unexpected. You know, plan ahead. Right. And parking is very important, George. I mean, because you just can't park anywhere, it seems like, whether you're too close to a car. People have road rage. That's another issue that we haven't talked about a whole lot is road rage, is that people are driving angry, whether they're trying to merge you into a lane on the interstate or they're following too close. I mean, you see it happens to everybody. How do you control something like that? Is it best just to ignore them and not make eye contact, I guess? Well, that's... uh Obviously, the first thing you have to do is keep your vehicle under control. But secondly, yeah, and probably most importantly, we all have to be mature enough to be in control of uh, our emotions. And I, I think that's where uh, at least one or two generations that we're uh, living with today uh, come up short. They have just never been to control those emotions. It's like it's okay. Express yourself. Uh you know, it, 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 you let one thing get a little bit out of hand uh, like that. You know, okay, we can, it's okay, we can express ourselves, but within the limits. Mm-hmm. But if you never have those limits set, then there are none. And when you get out on, on the highway and somebody does something, it may be purely, you know, accidental. But, you know, we, we know, most drivers know that you have a blind spot on both sides of the vehicle that your uh, rear view mirror nor your side view mirrors will pick up without actually moving the mirror mirror around and scanning that particular area. And if you have somebody in that area and you're not, you know, don't have your head on the swivel, uh, even if you put your turn signal on, and a lot of people think, well, I put my turn signal on, so that means they got to get out of my way. No, it, it doesn't. It means you wait your turn. But you can inadvertently swerve into the path of somebody. They say, well, he cut me off, and then that starts the rage, and they want to do something to, to get back versus taking a deep breath, backing away, you know, letting the guy go. It just doesn't make sense to get into an altercation out on the highway. Nobody wins. Right, because it's not personal. It's not like you know the person. So, that's and, right. And that's they right. can't – you can cuss all you want, but they're not going to hear you either. So you're in your car. But it happens that you and I had mentioned this a while back, you know, when there's looting because of hurricanes or something, but bad weather. I was driving back from northern Virginia in a snowstorm. It was snowing the entire way from northern Virginia to Williamsburg. Nothing in our area a few weeks ago, but cars were broken down. You know, so, you know, the criminal intent, unfortunately, feeds off that as well. You, you really have – have to be prepared. I think the least um, you need is mace. I mean, if you're if you're armed and you're secured and licensed to carry, that's one thing. But if you're not, you would need some type of protection, right, George? What about the person that doesn't want a gun? What would you recommend for him? Uh, well, the uh, mace is obviously you know, we would call it mace. It, you know, it's it, it not mace as we know it as as the you know, police departments know, but it's uh, a pepper spray, mm-hmm. and uh, it, that's fairly you know, cheap. To, uh, to get uh, anybody can uh, can get it. You can carry it in your pocket or pocketbook or have it in the console of your vehicle. And certainly that would be, you know, if, if you have a, uh, a fear of, of being uh, accosted or worse, that you could uh, use that, that pepper spray to try to uh, you know, defend yourself and, and run you know, the, the attacker off. Uh, absent that, uh, you can have these high-voltage electrical uh, I, I, I hesitate to call them a taser because they're not a taser, but they're made to kind of imitate the taser. But it's it doesn't shoot anything, and you have to make uh, physical contact with someone's 
body. So this is an up close and personal, you know, kind of the thing of the last resort. The pepper spray you want to use to keep people away from you. And if you've got somebody that's right up that has a hold of you, using pepper spray on them also put the pepper spray on you and in your eyes, and then you know, you're you're no better off than your attacker. Right. They have the you know, the taser like device and you get that into them and you know zap them that can be hit with a couple hundred thousand volts and that's going to put them down talking to George McLean at the Marksman George thank you for that information what's new at the Marksman and I guess everybody that walks in the door is not as educated as the next person there are some people that are naive on how to use a gun what type of guns are available when they walk in and I guess you got everybody from the experienced person from another state or a newbie who knows nothing about guns at all no matter what age or sex well that's that's uh, that's right that's why we're there. You, know, you have experts, you know, come in, they, they know what they want. Uh, you know, they're obviously the, the easiest customer to deal with. Um, the, the most challenging is, is the, the neophyte, uh, has no idea other than they may have had a personal experience recently that, uh, made them, you know, think more about their, their safety. Uh, I mean, it may be a home defense or might just be personal safety while they're, out and around it in public. So uh, you've got to start at square one and start that education uh, process. And obviously that gets into the, the, the legal side of things uh, before you even start talking about hardware and then getting into the hardware, uh, what what they is comfortable for them to shoot, what's what's practical, what's affordable. So several questions, but we, we take our time uh, to help the individual. You know, we're, we're not the pushy uh car sales people to try to get you into the something just because this is what we have sitting on the shelf. Uh, we don't, don't play that game. Uh, so we work with the customer to try to get uh, something that is going to fit them once they get educated to the point to be able to make that informed uh, decision. Very nice talking to George McLean. And tell us, too, because we're in a new year here for felons, they're not allowed to touch any gun at all, correct? They can't come into your shooting range tomorrow and say, I want to take practice range, correct? No, they, they cannot uh, be in possession of firearm or ammunition, either one. What about misdemeanors? Uh, misdemeanors, there's no restriction uh, on that unless it's a court-ordered uh, deal, but that would be something over and above what the, the, the code uh, says. Uh, it's, it's, it's a, it's a felon that has, uh, uh, has the, the legal, uh, standing to not, you're, you're directed to not be in possession of, uh, that ammo and, and firearm. The one misdemeanor that will apply kind of to that is uh, one of domestic violence, if you, uh, which, which is not a felony depending on the type of crime, but the, even the minimal domestic violence, uh, uh, charge uh, would be a misdemeanor, but because it's domestic violence, that in, right there would uh, keep you from being in possession of firearm or ammunition. And if someone uh, takes out a restraining order against you for whatever reason, as long as that restraining order is in effect, uh, you will not be uh, legally able to be in possession of firearm or ammunition. When you do a background check, I'm sure it's even changed since when you first opened up your store there as far as the technology about knowing who is uh, viable and who's not? Well, we, we don't have access to all that. You know, police departments do, so we have to rely upon the honesty of the individual. Yeah. And if that individual comes in and, and lies uh, you know, to us, we have no way really to, to verify that. We don't have access to the NCIC computer uh, to kind of you know, take a look and see if this person has a, has a clean record. And obviously, we don't have the time or the you know, resources, nor does the police departments, so where we would you know, should be able to call in every day and say, hey, can you check out Don Smith? He's here one to you know, run a gun and go use the range. They don't have time for that either. Right. So it, it boils down to uh, the honesty of, of the individual. And you and I both know that there's a lot of individuals out there that honesty is not the top of their priority list. Mm -hmm. And sometimes that comes back to a them, but eventually it, it, it will. And if we find out about it, uh, then obviously we, we put them on a list to where they, they can't come in and, and shoot at all, even with their gun. And certainly they're not going to rent the uh, hires, but we, they have to fill out paperwork to rent hires. And if they lie on that paperwork, and if it can be proven that they, in fact, did, did lie, they will be prosecuted. George McLean is the owner of the Marksman in Newport News. Google the Marksman. What else is new at the Marksman for the first quarter of the year? 
Oh, just uh, getting new influx of uh, firearms, uh, you know, rolling in, uh, trying to you know, prep up. Uh, you know, it's tax time, so everyone's got their we have the refunds coming in. So this is usually for the next couple, two or three months. Uh, pretty busy for us, uh, you know, in that regard. Um, our our standard programs uh, for the you know two for Tuesday, you know, all day long on Tuesday, it's due for the price of one. So bring in a buddy. Only one of you pays, or you can split it 50, you know, 50, 50 each each way, but it's, you know, two of you shoot for the price of one. Uh, we got our first responders uh, programs, uh, our military uh, programs that, that you get the, uh, if you're uh, active or uh, reserve, or retired, uh, you know, military, you're going to be able to come in and, and shoot on the fit free, uh, free range uh, on, the, on the first and the 15th of every month. So we usually have something for everybody. Just, you know, come on. Check us out. Give us a call. Go on the website and uh, see what you think, and come in and uh, take a look around. Very nice. The Marksman Newport News. George McLean. Thank you, my friend. We will talk to you in February. Okay, great. Thanks a lot. You thank you, care. George McLean. Right there, always learning something from George at the Marksman. It's now time for Greg's highlights, presented by Hampton Roads Online Mall.com. We'd like to welcome the men and women in uniform serving around the world, listening to today's broadcast on TuneIn.com by typing WPMH in the search bar, also on YouTube. Thanks for all that you do. We hope you're enjoying today's version of Sports Scene right here on TuneIn and YouTube as well. Highlights, GJBTV.com, HRSMHOF.com, HamptonRoadsOnlineMall.com, GJBTV.com. Click the YouTube link on the homepage for archive shows and tell your friends. Question of the Day presented by Buffalo Wild Wings and Newport News to our producer, Joe Daniel. As we say farewell to Joe Daniel, and thank you for all of his time, talent, and treasure, blood, sweat, and tears by doing sports scene the last few years. We'll elaborate more on that in a second. Joe Daniel. What did you enjoy most about working here and the least and the most about this area and the least? And where would you like to eventually settle? Because you've been in a lot of different places. Three-part question. Oh, wow. That's a lot. Um, so the first part, my favorite part and the worst part about <laughs> working here, there really isn't a bad thing about working here. It's a, it's a great environment, great Christian family-owned company and I, I really enjoy the flexibility that and the opportunity that it's given me and radio is something that I've been interested in ever since I was a kid and so I'm just very grateful that I've been given this opportunity to work um, in, in this industry for as long as I have and I'm also very grateful for the opportunity of meeting new people and that's probably one of the best parts about radio is people come in we have some shows that come on the station and they eventually end, but just being able to work with other people and seeing their vision of the kind of show that they want to bring to our audience is really cool. And I've met some really, really great people. And that's probably one of the best things uh, about working in this industry, at least for me. Um, the area, I like the Virginia Beach area, the Hampton Roads area. There's a lot to do. You have the beach that's really close. You have malls. You have shopping centers. It's a good area, good family-friendly stuff uh, to do all over the place. Nightlife, daytime stuff, uh, parks. I like to go to Smithfield and walk those trails. And so I just really like the area. There's always something that's at least like 20 minutes away. And it's a good driving distance, nothing too far. Well, thank you for all that you did on this show. We evolved from doing a live show, as you know, from, you know, WHKT from 12 to 1 on Wednesdays. You know, you and Ken Johnson and um, you're moving on. But uh, I guess the listeners who've listened to your show here on Sports Scene with me and then your, your prior show are wondering if you love the area so much and you have conviction for this area, why are you moving? Oh, uh, just different job opportunity with, I'm actually going to be moving to San Antonio and working with my dad, and there's a great opportunity there, and it's one of those that you really can't pass up. Will we see Joe Daniel here again? Maybe. Yes. Hopefully. You're still young enough. All right, yeah. sports scene will continue after this. Hi, it's Colleen, General Manager at Chesapeake Portsmouth Broadcasting Corporation. You may know Dick Olenich and the Happy Printers have been advertising with us for years. But did you know that they do all of our printing here at the stations? They've been our printer of choice. They print everything for us. Our business cards, notepads, envelopes, forms, brochures, everything. It really is a pleasure to work with them. Their printing is spot on and their customer service is excellent. They always deliver. We've never had any issues with them, ever. They're just great to work with. 
Now they're giving away free Amazon gift cards. Every time you buy anything at thehappyprinters.com, you get a free Amazon gift card, even on inexpensive business cards. But it's only at thehappyprinters.com. Hey, you're going to buy print anyway. Why not get a free Amazon gift card too? Free Amazon gift cards at thehappyprinters.com. Again, free Amazon gift cards at thehappyprinters.com. You are listening to Sports Scene with Greg Bicaveras. Now, back to Greg. Since we're approaching Super Bowl season, a famous play, John Riggins made the former Redskins player a touchdown in the Super Bowl, 17 against um, the Dolphins, trailing Miami 17-13 to in the fourth quarter. Washington went for it on fourth and one. Riggins took it 43 yards for the go-ahead touchdown. The Redskins went on to win the game 27-17 to as Riggins was named the game's MVP for the Redskins as they beat the Miami Dolphins and Don Shula, of course, Riggins also played for the Jets as well. I want to thank our good friend Brenda Tusing from the Royal Chocolate. Brenda, Happy New Year. Happy New Year to you, Greg. Good to hear your voice. How is that voice, by the way? How is, the voice is so much better. Good. You I was s- really sick right before Christmas. What a horrible time to be sick. But I am back in action. You sound great. Of course, back thank in you. action at the Royal Chocolate. And the Royal Chocolate keeps evolving. How overall would you say the holiday season went for you from Thanksgiving we a, on? We had a great holiday season. We really did. Um, we did just, just so much, you know, energy going on in the holidays. We love it. We're all so busy. We have lots of people um, on staff, so that you know nobody has to wait too long, and everybody gets great service. And uh, yeah, we did really well. A lot of shipping and a lot of online orders, and just a great time of year. Everybody is really in a great mood and having fun. So it, it was a very good season, uh, you know, financially and also just you know as far as a business is concerned. And, just fun. Well, that's, <laughs> it was a good time. That's great to hear. You guys have definitely sustained for over a decade. And I guess that's one thing, too. I've always wondered, Brenda, why people get so euphoric during the holiday Christmas season, but you don't see that same euphoria for Easter or Thanksgiving. It's kind of a, a different, I guess it's so long because it's basically after Halloween. Well, I think it, yeah, it is a long season. You know, people say to me sometimes, so what's your busiest day of the year, time of the year? Our busiest season, obviously, is Christmas because it is so long. Valentine's is very intense, very intense, very short window of time. And the same thing with Easter and Mother's Day and those sorts of things. But East, I mean, Christmas is just those several weeks. And everybody's, they're a combination of exhausted, mm-hmm. overwhelmed, and excited. <laughs> so it's, it's just a mess. But, yeah, there's just a lot of emotion running at that holiday season. So we try to make everybody just calm down and, and enjoy at least the time that they're in the store with us. You're exactly right because some of the big box stores, they're going to have 12 checkout lines during the holiday season. And you'll see that Valentine's Day, you know, uh, candy out as soon as December 26 rolls around. Yes, yes, exactly. And we've started to, because, you know, before I was in retail, I have to say, I didn't understand. I would always complain, oh, why is there stuff out so early? And why, oh, I'm so tired of seeing this. Or, but, you know, and here's the, the thing is that once one season is over, you need to begin to, and maybe, you know, I hate when they overlap seasons, but, you know, you need to begin to put your things out so that people can see what you have. No, they're not shopping yet for Valentine's Day necessarily, but as they're in for other things, they see, oh, look, we have those red heart roses, long-stemmed roses, and we're having um, Valentine's Day seedings, and we can give them information about that, and they see the boxes of chocolates. It, it makes a little mental note, oh, I should come back here closer to Valentine's Day. I saw something I like, whatever it might be. So there's that subliminal showing people what you have earlier than the actual season. Right. And as my business partner, Terry, says, mm-hmm. you can't sell it from the back room. Yeah, you got to be front and center. And yeah, exactly. you really, got to be out there. I mean, they're all big candy days and chocolate days. You think about Halloween. Then, of course, Thanksgiving is, is right there for dessert. Then Christmas, of course, is always nice to give chocolate. Then you got Valentine's on the 14th, and Easter is right around the corner. So, you know, once, you know, once Valentine's comes, Easter is right there, too. Yeah, Easter's a little late this year, which is kind of nice. It gives everybody that little bit of breathing room in between um and you can really you know decorate the store nicely it's not so rushed sometimes when easter comes so early like early part of march you feel like you've just finished with valentine's day but it's at the end of april this year so that gives everybody a little bit of breathing room uh between valentine's day and easter but we're ready for valentine's day we've got um 
a lot of beautiful displays in the store. And like I said, we're having some fondue seatings. We're doing some extra make-your-own chocolate bar events in December. We're doing three of them in December instead of just one. And uh, we have a pretty red heart-shaped box that you can make your own chocolate bar and use. It's really, really nice. Folks, if you haven't been to Brenda's store, the demand for parking near her store is unbelievable, especially this time of the year. And, of course, uh, there's plenty of parking in the town center. It's evolved. How would you say your store has evolved from the time you had the inventory when you and Terry first opened up over a decade ago to now? I mean, sure, that's changed a little bit, too. Oh, my world. It's it. I mean, it's really, Greg, like two different universes. Mm. When we first moved in, the... Um, Excuse me, maybe my voice isn't as great as I thought it was. Um, right now, right across the street from us is Williams Sedoma and mm. Pottery Barn. Mm-hmm. And when we first moved in, that was a an orange wall. Mm. It was a construction area behind the wall, and then it was um, it was a parking lot for a while. It was a grassy area. It's been several different things, and now it's a huge um, you know a huge block of stores, apartments, the Zyder Theater, uh, just even on our own street. The ABC store is opening up next to us. Uh, We have new things moving in all the time. So it's dramatically different. Yeah, I went to the symphony during the holidays, and somebody asked me this, and I'm sure you're the best person to ask. The Zyder Theater is right next to the Sandler Center. Don't they technically compete for theater? You know, not really. They do different things. Zyder's uh, focuses a lot on local talent, and as they explain that to us, that's not just local, you know, Norfolk, Virginia Beach, this area is, you know, up into Richmond area and things like that. So their their shows are a little unique, um, a little different than what Sandler uh, puts on. So they they really don't compete. Um, Both have... Tremendous amount of opportunity uh, for growth and and just different different things going on. Uh, so no, they don't really don't compete. They they each have their own flavor, I guess you would say. To me, a perfect night out would go to the Royal Chocolate and go to the Symphony. If you've never been to the Symphony, folks, at the Sandler Center, go. It is a must for the holiday season, next holiday season. You're right. Anytime. They're, they're, and I've been there a number of times. And unfortunately, I haven't yet had a chance to see a show at the New Zyder Theater. Um, but, and I would have to say it's probably true because I have toured the Zyder. Mm-hmm. The Zyder, there's not a bad seat in the house. Yeah. I mean, there really, truly is not a bad seat in the house. Let's talk about uh, the Royal Chocolate over 10 years now and all the social media. Um, We're on Instagram. We've got a great Facebook page. We run a lot of specials every week. We have a different special. Um, And so you'll find that on our Facebook page. You can always sign up. We have a a huge following for um, emails, so we always send out things for emails. But, yeah, Facebook, Instagram. Uh, I'm not a Twitter person, so Mm -hmm. I don't know much about Twitter. Uh, we may have a presence on there. I have somebody that helps me with social media, but sure. I'm not aware of it, frankly. Uh, so, yeah, Instagram, Facebook, and, of course, if you ever want to come into the store and sign up for our email blast so you know what we're doing all the time, uh, then you enter to win uh, chocolate fondue for two also. Yes, yeah, seven days a week, five five seven sixty nine twenty five. something for everyone at the Royal Chocolate. Young, old kids, you got it. It's there. Brenda, thank you. Take care of that voice, and we will talk to you yeah, next month. Yeah, it's a little odd today, isn't it? It comes it, and goes. It's all good. But look, you got some warm beverages there to take care of it. I'm going out there and get myself one of our wonderful hot teas. Yes, I need to come by there and get some of that stuff here you soon. Should. I'm sorry I missed you yesterday, by the way. No, you I need to. out so quickly. Yeah, I'm going to come by there. Like I said, I need to do the uh, social media post, too. So. Okay, great. Very good. Say hello to Terry, and thank you, and Happy New Year. Happy New Year, Greg. Thanks so much. Thank you, Brenda. Brenda Tusing right there from the Royal Chocolate. It really does make you feel good, Joe Daniel, when you have some type of uh, dessert or something to pick me up in this, kind of, especially during the winter when we're all kind of, it gets dark so early, we're all kind of down and out a little bit. Yeah, absolutely. I was just hanging out with my kids, and it was cold outside, and one of the things that they asked for was uh, a hot chocolate. And like you said, there's nothing better than having that, that the dessert, and it's heated, and, and something like that, something sweet to end your night. Absolutely. Stay tuned. What tees you off? Presented by Hampton Roads Online Mall.com.
want to thank our good friends at Buffalo Wild Wings, Paul and the staff, lunch, dinner, appetizers, mozzarella sticks, salads, boneless traditional wings, great specials, rollout menu. Like them on Facebook, follow them on Twitter, download their app for some great points. Lunch and dinner seven days a week. All the games on TV. Wings, beer, sports. Phone number is 249-3999. Area code, of course, 757-12150 Jefferson Avenue, Newport News. Next to Patrick Henry Mall, Buffalo Wild Wings. Joe Daniel, what teased me off? Continuity interrupted like you leaving us, my friend. Yeah, sometimes life will hit you with something unexpected or, like we said earlier, opportunities that are really just difficult to pass up. But, you know, you just got to keep moving forward. People in sales thinking that only their organization where they work for is where advertising agencies buy. I don't think so. We spread it around, folks. We don't just buy on one station. We buy everywhere. Spreading out your... uh Your goods. Uh, Yeah, exactly. Just spreading it out, making sure not everything is in one basket, as they say. I'll say this one. Lack of Redskins fans at uh, the game against the Eagles on December 30th, week 17. The Redskins ended up 7-9. But the Eagles fans overcrowding the home fans of the Redskins, regardless if you're a sports fan, that ain't good when you have more visitors than home people. Yeah, that is pretty bad. Uh, I've heard different stuff like that in basketball and other sports where, yeah, the visiting team or um, in MMA, uh, McGregor, he's from Ireland. And there were so many people that flew in from Ireland to watch him fight. Uh, in one of its fights, and it was amazing. It's really, really cool to see that. All right, I like sporting events, but the length of sporting events are too long. I mean, the rules are ridiculous. They last way too long, especially for the fans that attend the games. Yeah, and I heard you talking. This was years ago. You had a guest where you were talking about baseball and just how long a baseball game lasts, and people were talking about how can they change the game in order for it to speed up just a little bit. Do we, should we try to shorten the inning somehow, or how do we make this game go a little bit quicker. You're exactly right, too, because if it lasts too long, they keep you captive there like an airport. They charge you higher concessions, and they know you don't want to go anywhere. So yeah. it's almost like they keep you a prisoner at a sporting event. All right, players on teams that do not wear the same shoes or mix match the tire, your team wear the right uniform. I know that some, like for breast cancer awareness, they'll do pink shoes or something fun like that. But yeah, I, I kind of do agree with that, where uniformity, it's called a uniform for a reason. But I understand that some people may want to be a little unique and show off just how different and cool their socks are or how different and cool their shoes are. You know this because you were married to at one time a military spouse. You don't have the army wearing what the Navy wears. Absolutely. You know, they so yeah. never would. <laughs> yeah, exactly. All right. People that are politically correct in this politically correct environment just for the sake of it. I mean, mean it, own it, don't be phony. But I guess at the same time, you got to have a mind, you got to have a tongue. You have to watch what you say because you can offend people quick. Yeah, and that's the big thing. Everybody is offended over something. And it's kind of hard and you kind of want to throw up your hands and just give up and just try to keep things respectful, obviously. But sometimes you just kind of have to throw your hands up like somebody's going to get offended. You can't please everybody all the time. Has been radio TV host. If it's time to go, folks, it's time to go. End on a high note. Yes. Too many reality shows like Dancing with the Stars and B-rated celebrities. There's a reason you're a B-rated celebrity and Dancing with the Stars wants you because you've messed up somewhere in your personal life. Yeah, or it's one of those things. You know, you overstayed your welcome, maybe. Speaking of which, what's in it for me? Those types of people. Oh, yeah. Horrible. That's a horrible mentality to have. And I understand you you don't want to be that constant giver all the time because you're going to eventually run out of stuff to give. Um, you have to think a little selfishly at some times. But if that's the only way that you think, that is that obviously wrong. This that's been, another end of the extreme. Right. This has been one of our favorites, speeding on exit lanes or ramps. You have to speed, you know, to catch up with the flow of traffic. But taking that turn... Be very mindful and careful because you never know what's going to be on that road. Maybe there was a branch that fell, a piece of trash on that turn. And if you're trying to take a a 25 mile an hour turn at 50, you know, that you're just asking for a car crash, a disaster to occur. And don't tailgate too when you see accidents or tailgate a car. Last thing, this is the worst in the wintertime, cracks on your skin and your hands. Yeah, keep your hands moisturized. (laughs) There's nothing worse than then bending your fingers and then that skin just cracks um, right on the knuckle. Keep them hydrated and I know they have a bunch of different lotions and creams to put on your hands and definitely if that's something that happens to you with the dry weather, invest in something like that. That's what teased me off. All right, I want to thank our great guest today, Ron Peterson, as well as George McClain, Brenda Tusing. For more, go to ggbtv.com. Hit the YouTube link. 
TuneIn.com. Type in WPMH every Saturday morning from 10 a.m. to 11 a.m. In the search bar, Sports Scene is on the radio Saturday from 10 to 11 on 1010 a.m. 100.1 FM, The Lighthouse. TuneIn.com. Type in WPMH. We thank our great producer, Joe Daniel, for all of his work on this show. We will be in touch. And, of course, uh, he'll be a big part of the show for years to come in spirit as well. So for Joe Daniel, I'm Greg Bicavaris. Happy January. We'll talk to you soon.